Hello and welcome to Amigos IAS. I am Adnan. India is scripting history this week by launching its first winter expedition to Arctic region. Usually we have summer expeditions. Then why this winter expedition is going to start now? And we also will try to understand what are India's interests in the Arctic to understand the climate of Arctic, the polar climate and see its link with the tropical climate. So in this uh, particular segment, we will be discussing the aspect of this India's research. But this topic is quite broader regarding India's interest in the Arctic. You also have to see the geopolitical impact of that and also regarding India's energy interests as well. But in today's segment, we will be discussing only the news related aspects of this and on peripheral areas, we will touch the significance of Arctic. So starting with this first point, it was a very interesting news to uh, watch because generally uh, what happens is India already is doing a lot of research in Antarctica. We already have two important bases there, Maitri and Bharti. And we also have one permanent research station in, uh, in Norway, in Svalbard, which is called Himadri. So what is this new news about? What is this thing which is quite different from what we already have been doing so far? So let us try to understand that. But before it, four scientists will be going in this expedition. And they will be doing atmospheric observations during this polar nights. Mostly, okay, the in the nights, this polar nights are quite longer than 24 hours as what we see in the rest of the earth. And in this phase, now in the winter, in the harsh climate, more research is going to happen to complement with the summer research. They will monitor the variations in the sea ice and to understand broadly how it is going to impact the climate, the Arctic region sea level rise because arctic ice is melting and the biodiversity aspect also. Their work is expected to provide variable insights on the interactions between the polar climate with the Indian monsoon system okay, and as well as contribute to the broader understanding of global warming effects which we are witnessing right now. So how much of global warming is impacting the arctic also is very important because arctic ice is melting quite faster. And Arctic is having more warming compared to the other parts of the earth and how it is going to impact the monsoons of India, we have to understand. Fine. So Himadri Research Station is the station, the only station what we have in Svalbard in Norway. This is one important point. And this is a base for year-round observations, enhancing the scope of India's research capabilities. And last year in May, we already have launched the Arctic policy in which we have given some important points. We will be learning about that also. Scientific cooperation, environmental protection and sustainable development are very important components of this India's Arctic policy. The winter expedition is not only about India's commitment to expanding its scientific frontiers, but also having international collaboration in trying to understand our planet's dynamics of the climate. Okay, that is one important point. So what is the nodal agency for the polar research in India? So we have the Ministry of Earth Sciences, that is first thing. Under it, there is an autonomous research organization called as National Center for Polar and Ocean Research, which is located in Goa. So this is the nodal agency, which is responsible for the polar explorations and polar research in India. So please, this can be asked, note down this point, this can be asked in the prelims. Now next one. Why it is being studied? As we already discussed, because one thing is that Arctic as well as Antarctic, both are important uh, aspects for us to research, to understand the evolution of Earth, the origin of the Earth, as well as we have to understand how the climate change or the climate dynamics are being uh, uh, impacting the Arctic and the Antarctic and how it is going to affect the entire climate cycle of the earth. That is what is the important concern here. So climate experts have found, as you can see, as sea levels will rise, the entire atmospheric phenomena will change. Climate experts have found that on average, temperatures in the Arctic region have risen by 4 degrees Celsius in the last 100 years. And the Arctic sea ice, that is what, is declining at a rate of 13% per decade, very alarming statistic here. At this rate, the Arctic Ocean could go ice free by the summer of 2040. That is going to severely impact the entire atmospheric circulation and the climate cycle of the earth. Devastating effects could be there. Studies have said that increasing Arctic sea ice loss, when the Arctic sea melts, what is going to happen? Because ice has high albedo effect. It reflects the sunlight back. But if there is no ice, what happens? 
more absorption of light will happen. So what happens here? Greater tropical sea surface temperatures because now there is no white ice. So now the ocean will absorb more heat. As a result, the temperatures will rise in the tropical waters. Fine. And increasing precipitation, more warming means more precipitation happens, erratic precipitation happens, shift in the intertropical convergence zone. So this ITC is, it, is nothing but a confluence or convergence of trade winds near the equator. And this will definitely impact, this actually is a factor which impacts the Indian monsoon. Now, if this ITCZ starts shifting, it may impact the Indian monsoon also in negative ways. So, we have to understand and study this also because of the Arctic sea ice melting. And the next segment here, with such changes, we have to understand the Arctic is becoming more habitable and less hostile because of the melting of the ice. It is now more hospitable, more and more trade routes are getting open, northern sea is opening. In no time, there could be a rush to explore and exploit the region's resources, mineral resources are there, hydrocarbons will come out once the ice melts and to gain supremacy over trade, navigation and other geo-economic and strategic sectors. So as we can see here, this particular usual Suez Canal route is this, which is quite longer. It usually takes for India also, like 45 days route is this one. This route is what around 38 days, that means cutting down of the entire distance or time taken for the travel and for Russia also it is very important because here in Russia for them it is easy for the, see here the western part of Russia and here you can see the far eastern part, generally it takes a lot of time for the western part of Russia to reach to the far east. Now, because this route will open up now because of the ice melting, so Russia will have easy access and safe lanes here when it comes to the melting of Arctic ice. So, new sea routes open and more competition will come in this area and it is going to impact the biodiversity as well. So, all these geopolitical impacts we also have to understand. Competition for trade, energy, resources also will heat up once the Arctic ice will melt. Okay, that is one negative consequence here and it's positive for some countries, negative for the overall planet. So why are it is expeditions challenging for the Arctic compared to Antarctica? Antarctica is actually far more remote, more harsher than Arctic. But the point is, the important point here is, in Arctic, Antarctica is gu guided by Antarctica, Antarctic Treaty. Antarctic Treaty is something which guides, guides the entire region of Antarctic, which is open for all the countries to explore. But when it comes to the Arctic, several countries are having their national jurisdictions over the Arctic. Unlike in Antarctic where, where there are some serious conditions like for example, you cannot have any nuclear tests there, you cannot have permanently living people over there except the researchers. So Antarctic Treaty guides the region of Antarctica. But for Arctic, we don't have such treaty because Arctic is scattered across several countries like let's say Canada, Denmark, Norway, USA, Russia, all these countries are part of the Arctic Council as well. So it is difficult for the countries to have access to those regions. Okay, that is one important point. And temperature as you can see in the coldest month, minus 14 degrees Celsius. And in the warmest month, it is around 5 degrees Celsius. That is one thing in Svalbard. In the hostile environment, performing both outdoor and indoor observations are largely limited to the summer months because of less facilities in the winter months. Okay, so far only three research stations have had permanent deployment. Now India is going to be the fourth country which is having the distinction of having permanent research stations working throughout the year. And eight Arctic countries for the exam purpose, it is important. Already they asked in prelims, what are the members of Arctic Council? Because India became an observer in the Arctic Council. They asked question on the members of the Arctic Council. So here Canada, Denmark, Finland. Okay, the Scandinavian countries are there, Iceland, Norway, Russia, Sweden and USA are the countries which form the Arctic Council. India is only an observer country but not a permanent member, fine. Now you see here, these many countries have jurisdictions over the Arctic. It becomes difficult for us to have permanent stations there and these countries have conflicting jurisdictions and geopolitical tensions, for example, we can see the complications of Russia-Ukraine war. Because of this, half of the Arctic is not accessible because it falls in the Russian zone. So these overlapping national jurisdictions and complications of geopolitics also hinder, also bring challenges to explore the Arctic, unlike the Antarctic, 
which is governed by the Antarctic Treaty, where all countries are welcome to have explorations, even though it is quite remote and quite harsher. And some also say that there is a threat of polar bears also, which also, you know, are in uh, good numbers there in the Arctic. So, there they are also a kind of a threat, we can say, apart from the complete lack of facilities. And what will be studied as we just understood, atmospheric sciences, astronomy, astrophysics, lightning over the Arctic is increasing a lot these days. It is also going to impact the climate. Okay, the role of precipitation on climate change, aerosols also are having impact on climate change because they absorb more heat and more heat means more precipitation, more precipitation, more floods. Okay, and erratic weather patterns also are going to come and radio frequency environment also in the Arctic is going to be studied there. And auroras, the lightning, the changes of the color of the lightning is there, no? the lights, uh, what we call as northern lights, that is also going to be studied in this particular expedition. And it is going to be at Himadri, India's only research station in this Ne Alison. Fine. And it is around 1200 kilometers from the North Pole. Next segment here. How has India's interest evolved? Evolution of India's uh, expeditions in the, the Arctic. In 1920, we have signed the Svalbard Treaty. And uh, this allowed India to operate in the Svalbard Archipelago, which is a group of islands there. And it is the sovereign control of which country? Norway. Because Svalbard is there in Norway. And they actually are quite generous to India. Has given us a lot of facilities to operate there. But not much concrete research at that time. Then what happens? In 2007, it is a very turning point here. Because India's first expedition, having five scientists visit the International Arctic Research Facilities. And within one year, in 2008, India establishes Himadri at the permanent station there. And this station has hosted around 400 researchers across 200 visits since it began operations in July 2008. That means India's only station is Himadri. That is what you have to note for the exam perspective here. Fine. And then next segment here. In 2014, this already has been asked in the exam. An underwater, okay, moored observatory means underwater observatory, which is called as Ind Ark also was established in the Kongs Fjorden as a part of this archipelago. Okay, in this archipelago, it is a fjord, okay, it's a, it's a valley called as Kongs Fjorden. There, underwater India established one observatory called as Ind Ark. Fine. And also we have a separate lab called as Gruve Bade atmospheric laboratory to study the atmospheric aspects okay atmospheric sciences also in 2016 so we are seeing only the evolution here guys in last year the government has finally given its comprehensive arctic policy because arctic is assuming a lot of significance these days so what is the pillars of this arctic policy six pillars science and research climate and environment protection okay self explanatory points economic interests and human development also are there Economic interests are there because rich in resources, transportation and connectivity, new sea routes are going to come now, going to cut down the time taken for the ships to go, governance and international cooperation, every country have to collaborate there, okay, and national capacity building also is important, that is how we also explore the sciences and become stronger, technology, okay. So further, India is member of the Nee Allison Science Managers Committee. Arctic Science Committee, University of Arctic and Asian Forum for Polar Sciences. This is again, you cannot remember all this for the exam perspective, but just for understanding purpose, that shows India's deepening engagement with the different research uh, laboratories and different universities concerning with the Arctic region. That is what is important here. Again, difficult to remember everything for the exam perspective, but evolution is a study in a conclusive way. Okay, and this is the laboratory I was just talking about. Okay, see the terrain there. And this is the station, what we call Gruva Bade Atmospheric Laboratory, India's northernmost atmospheric lab is there. So, the basic purposes are what? Summarizing the points, climate, dynamics, impact on, of, you know, our Indian monsoon because polar climate, tropical climate has some bearing, has some connection, which you want to explore further. Okay. And the melting of the Arctic sea ice how it is going to impact the global warming as well. That means the global warming, how it is going to impact more and more Arctic sea ice melting and how it is going to affect the climatic variations within the India and the planet as a whole. That is the important point. Then the next aspect comes like what about the minerals and other research also will come into picture. And this is one of the important aspects of this uh, expedition.
And now this question they have asked in 2015, the term end arc is in the news in the name of because, okay, it was in news at that time and already 2015, 14, 15 were very much in news guys. So they asked this question because during that time this end arc actually came into operation. So please, I mean, you can easily understand what is the answer because the same topic what we discussed. Next one, UPC means. What are the economic significance of discovery of oil in Arctic Sea and the possible environmental consequences? Okay, why is India taking keen interest in resources of Arctic region? So they asked in geographical perspective of resources. Okay, that is how the questions have been framed. So you can give your answer based on the entire, uh, for example, first question is there, discovery of oil, how it is important because it's a resource which India also requires. And next one is what? Keen in the other resources of Arctic region, minerals, hydrocarbons, oil, all these are the important resources what we have. So please do frame your answers in that perspective. But this particular, of course, segment today concentrated on only one aspect. This topic is quite broader when it talks about India's interest in the Arctic and Antarctic. We have to understand different dimensions there. So for example, if I say Arctic, you need to go towards, okay, climate dimension, economic dimension, okay, resources dimension and the larger geopolitical dimensions because China also is taking keen interest in the Arctic. China is calling itself as a near Arctic state, near Arctic state and Russia also is there. So how the geopolitical dynamics also change in this region, we have to pay attention to all these aspects. So today we discussed only one simple segment of this because it's in news. So do read up more on this topic. And if you have any questions, please do ask in the comments. So keep watching amigos. Thank you.